And just like that, you've been sent back to the late Permian. Or, as I like to call it, the absolute worst time to be alive. But hey, let's see if you have what it takes to survive. You've just landed smack dab in the middle of the largest desert the planet has ever seen. There's no water, no trees, just endless, dry wasteland. Though to be fair, at least you don't have to worry about predators. Unless you consider Mother Nature. The air is hot. Like walking directly into an oven hot. The sun feels like a laser beam slowly melting you from the inside out. And the air feels like you're breathing through a straw. So Earth is experiencing the worst mass extinction event in its entire history. Up north in what will eventually become Siberia, a chain of volcanic eruptions known as the Siberian Traps have been spewing gas, ash, and lava into the air for hundreds of thousands of years. And not just regular lava either. Oh no, that'd be too easy. As these eruptions have ignited huge underground coal deposits, pumping the air full of carbon dioxide, methane, and sulfur. In short, Siberia exploded. And to top it off, you've got Pangaea. That's the giant supercontinent you find yourself in the middle of. And due to its size, moisture from the ocean can't make it to the interior, hence the oven-like conditions you find yourself in. Supercontinents are not very super when you're trying to survive on them. But still, let's see if your odds of survival are any better elsewhere. Option 1, Russia. Yeah, this ain't so great either. Why are we here then? Okay, I just wanted to do the Terminator reference. But also to show you the destruction that's going on. Because of all the volcanic activity, an area the size of Greenland is completely covered in a huge lava field. So Russia's a no-go. How about option two, North America? Huh, this actually looks kind of nice. Plenty of species are still hanging on. And look at that, they even have a place to do Pilates. But <laughs> the smell of sulfur. Depending on the direction of the winds in Siberia, toxic plumes can roll over here and suffocate just about anything in its path. Ooh. Okay, third time's a charm, South Africa. And good news, you're far enough away from the Siberian traps to avoid instant death, but something's off. Everything looks exactly the same as North America. You, my good sir, have just run into another problem with living on a supercontinent. Because every species can walk from one side of the planet to the other, you can pretty much find the same plants and animals wherever you go. But the worst part, there's no Pilates place this time. But just because you can actually breathe the air here, doesn't mean your death will be any less gruesome. In fact, it'll probably be more so. But no time to dwell on that right now, because you're starting to feel hungry. Oh, I'm not actually that hungry right now. Yes you are, because the narrative requires it. For today's menu sir, you have two options. Plants or meat. Most plants are dying from the toxic fumes in there, but they're still easier to get than chasing down an animal. <sighs> Oh, do you feel something? Is your stomach cramping? Do you have cold sweats dripping down your head? You fool. This is the late Permian. You thought food would just be lying around? Huh, well, that could have been a lot worse. Oh, there it is. The world is full of ginkgos, cycads, ferns, and horsetails but they're all full of toxic compounds. So you'll either have to eat extremely small portions or we're going with option two, meat. Bad news though, you won't get to eat any dinosaurs. They won't show up for another 20 million years and their ancestors are still tiny and pretty rare. Instead, the Permian landscape is actually ruled by the ancestors of us mammals. They dominate almost every major rule from the top herbivores to the apex predators. But for your first meal, let's go for something a little bigger a little tougher, a little more exotic. A pariasaur. Its closest relative alive where you're from is the turtle. Maybe, but who cares, you're gonna eat it anyways. Only problem, it's not just gonna let that happen. First off, they've got thick, armor-plated skin that makes it ridiculously tough to bring down. And why all the armor? Two reasons. The sun's trying to kill everything. Without thick skin, you'd pretty quickly burn to a crisp. But don't worry, I brought SPF 100. I uh, only brought enough for me though. Not that it matters, because you'll be dead long before the sunburn kicks in anyways. That's a Gorgonopsid, and they're the main reason pariasaurs are so armored. They're the top predators of the Permian. Their skulls look like something straight out of a Fallout game. 
they grow up to 600 pounds, and they've got foot-long saber teeth that pierce through flesh with ease. But they're not the only thing hunting you. Meet the Therosophalian, one of the mid-sized killers roaming around. And look at him, so cute. Who's a good boy? Yeah, turns out it's not just the plants that are toxic around here. Some Therosophalians, like this little menace, are venomous. Which means if the bite doesn't kill you, the slow, agonizing paralysis definitely will. New plan. See that burrow? That's home to a tiny cynodont. Best part, they're too small to rip your face off. So just reach in and grab your dinner. Oh, uh... Yeah, so I forgot to mention, that's your great grandpa. And congratulations, you've just erased yourself from existence. You know what, let's just go find something to drink instead. All that dying is starting to make you feel thirsty. Anyway, about that water. Yeah, that can kill you too. Thanks to acid rain and all the lovely toxins floating around, most water sources are basically liquid death. So your best bet, fall something and see what it drinks. And would you look at that, a conveniently timed Lystrosaurus. Let's tail him and see where he goes. You end up in what looks like a small pond. Well, more like the sad remains of a lake. But hey, at least the water looks clean. But that doesn't make it safe. You're now inside the belly of a Temnospondyl, one of the giant amphibians that more or less fill the same role of crocodiles, since actual crocodiles haven't evolved yet. Here's a thought, let's try moving around at night instead, less predators, and that sun is really starting to take a toll on you. Hmm, we've got another problem, you can't see anything, but hey, at least the animation's pretty easy. Dude, where'd you find the drums? Wait, something's off. Okay, who turned on the bugs? See, the Great Dying was the single biggest extinction event insects have ever faced, wiping out nearly 85% of arthropods. So let's turn that noise down a bit, and much better. Now go ahead and try finding your way around. Ooh! Ah! Dude, you stepped on my foot! Okay, you know what? Plan B, the land is just too hard to navigate. Let's try going to the oceans instead. If you look to your left, you'll see ocean. And to your right, even more ocean, because this is the Panthalassa Super Ocean, and it covers nearly 70% of the planet, and it's considered the largest hot tub to ever exist, because in many parts the water temperatures can reach past 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or 38 degrees Celsius for those of you who don't use freedom units. So these warm waters, fantastic for you, but for everything else, it's kind of a boiling death trap. But that's only the beginning, because it's kind of like the worst domino effect to ever happen. As these high temperatures stop ocean currents from circulating properly. And no ocean currents means no fresh oxygen getting to the ocean floor. Which is why there are huge stretches of dead zones where not even the best adapted creatures can survive. And it doesn't end there, because certain bacteria have started to show up that pump out hydrogen sulfide, a gas so toxic it can wipe out almost anything it touches. Including, say, you. And lastly, kinda like my used car batteries, all that volcanic activity has been throwing toxic runoff right into the ocean, resulting in 96% of corals, gone. 97% of ammonites, goodbye. Countless fish species, wiped out. And of course, the trilobites, a group of marine arthropods that have lived on Earth for 270 million years, are just barely hanging in there. <gasps> and now they're extinct too. So yeah, the oceans are basically empty, with over 95% of all ocean life completely gone. All the cool weird sharks, prehistoric squids, and even some obscure marine reptiles, extinct. Alright, before I die of boredom, let's just go back to land. What the hell? The Lystrosaurus? not only survived the Great Dying, but absolutely thrived, eventually making up around 85% of all terrestrial animals during the early Triassic. Diapsids barely scraped by, but in time, will go on to become the dinosaurs. Priosaurs and their entire lineage would go extinct at the end of the Permian. Temnospondyls would never be as dominant as they once were, with the last of their lineage dying out in the early Cretaceous. And finally, Synapsids the most dominant group of animals in the Permian, completely devastated, with their descendants just waiting for their time to rise again. Overall, 81% of species on Earth died. But the real question, would you have survived the great dying? If you like this video, please support my Patreon or by subscribing. Now go watch this video 
and Jehona out. <laughs>